All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to just focus on this one video here. And then I am going to answer this question here. So what's this thousand years referring to? And I'm going to sort of mix the two in because this fellow, he's going to bring up the subject. As you can imagine, I found this video under Millennial Reign, The Thousand Year Israelite Reign by the Watcher comic book series. Alright, so let's listen to what he says. And, um, and we'll, this is it's basically going to be two parts. All right? The first part is going to be the dry bones prophecy, and then the second part is going to be the thousand years of Revelation 20. Um, and so Jeremiah 30 discusses this. Um, jumping ahead, we've got Ezekiel 37, which people know as the dry bones prophecy. Um, but this, this particular prophecy from Ezekiel actually is also a millennial kingdom prophecy. It's a thousand year reign prophecy. Um, in this passage, Ezekiel sees a vision of... Alright, <clears throat> okay, so let's get into it. His explanation is not going to mesh with what we actually read in Ezekiel 37. Alright, so let's get into this. Alright, so let's we're going to walk through this, alright? But this is important because I think once you see it the first time, you, you get it. Right, and then, and then now, anytime somebody brings it up, you already know it in your heart. So let's get into it. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and I answered O oh Lord God thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy upon those bones I'm sorry prophesy upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you. And I had to look this up uh, because I'm, I'm not very good at English, right? It's the only language I know, but I'm not. I'm still learning it, right? So sinews is like um, cartilage, I guess. Sound good to you? All right. So, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breathe, and I'm sorry, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. 
So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried, and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. Right? Now, you ought to know that this is talking about the end of the world the great day of the Lord judgment day when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven what happens first the dead in Christ shall rise then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord right so there shouldn't be any doubt I mean this really you know this is this burns my butt all right I've expressed that many times when people are too ignorant just too dumb to connect the dots and so they present something that's very confusing that they don't understand and nobody else can understand it when this is actually very simple stuff all right, so this very thing is prophesied from Genesis to Revelation. Now, this is not, I mean, come on, man. It's not complicated. Right, but let's continue. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves. O oh, my people, and brought you up out of your graves, and shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land, then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it, and performed it, saith the Lord. Right, and that own land, that new land, is the new earth with the new heavens, right? It's not that dirty, stinky, God-forsaken place over there in the Middle East today. You can't make that claim, right? There's no other possibility except that this happens at the end of the world when the sheep are separated from the goat, when the wheat is separated from the tare, when the saved is separated from the unsaved and the unsaved are destroyed right the whole world is destroyed and there's a new earth with new heavens okay the word of the Lord came again unto me saying moreover thou son of man take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel his companions and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand and when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee saying wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by this by these Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the land of Ephraim, I'm sorry, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand.
and the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations. Neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols nor with their detestable things nor with any of their transgressions but I will save them out of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned and will cleanse them so shall they be my people and I will be their God are you seeing it all right so it to give you a little perhaps a little help here one nation we are one nation we see this um, in the, for example Exodus 19 right Exodus 19 we see we see that we that we the children of Israel are a holy nation right this was back in the Old Testament when there was one um, country with borders and within that country was the kingdom of God and that kingdom of God was the holy nation of Israel the holy nation of God now Jesus has come along and torn down the borders so there are no more borders right and now the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ so now all of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we are a royal priesthood and holy nation right now right and then, of course, um, uh, let's go to let's go to uh, one more verse here. Yeah, this is all over the it's all over the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, right? Let me see if I can find this. Oh, I gotta think about this for one second right there for then will I turn to the people of pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent talking about the world to come right after we are resurrected all right we will all be one and there will not no longer be two nations or two kingdoms excuse me there's the well, no so right now we are the kingdom of God and then there is the kingdom of this world all right and the, so there's going to be a separation right and the kingdom of this world is going to be done away with so all that remains is those of us that are of God all right this is important to understand right and David my servant shall be king over them and they shall and I'm sorry and they all shall have one shepherd now you can figure the stuff out right Jesus is our shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want right 
They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. It's a big, big clue right there, forever. <clears throat> Alright, now I want you to think about this phrase, forever when you are considering what Mr. Comic Book says. He says this is talking about a thousand years. But I'm showing you very plainly this is not at all and not even implying a thousand years. It's very clear this is for ever moreover I will make a covenant of peace with them it shall be an everlasting covenant with them and I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore my tabernacle also shall be with them yeah I will be their God and they shall be my people and the heathen shall know that I the Lord do sanctify Israel when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore make no mistake about it this is not a thousand we're not putting our hope into a bonus thousand years we're putting our hope into everlasting life now this gentleman right here he's gonna give a brief description of what it's going to be like after Jesus returns and this is what I want to encourage people to do right because once you start to try to explain it then you expose the ridiculousness of what you teach All right, and it's really it's perverse it's disgusting and it's not biblical at all it lines m up with a comic book more than it does a Bible now let's listen to them all right okay and then so this is where I'm gonna transition into uh, answering this question so what's this thousand years referring to all right so let me find it I think it's about nine and a half minute mark I think it's all about getting people to this side of where they hate the God of the Bible and they desire to um, have the Antichrist, the Satan, to be their God. Okay. Yikes, 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 yikes. Okay. Real quick, I have to correct that. I can't let that go. All right, I cannot let that go. So if you look at, is it Revelation 13? yeah okay so the dragon we know the dragon is the same thing as the devil and Satan and the old serpent dragon serpent devil Satan it's all the same thing the beast is the anti Christ alright because and this is very simple stuff. In Daniel, he talks about the four beasts. This is where we get the term Antichrist from. This is why there's references in the New Testament about the Antichrist to come. It's pointing back to the book of Daniel. When Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And the four beasts are four kingdoms which shall come upon the earth. And then he, of course, he describes the fifth kingdom, which is the everlasting kingdom. But he names the first three beasts. And all those beasts, are, or all those kingdoms, same thing, are done away with. They're no longer in power when baby Jesus is born. When we start to read the New Testament, we realize, we learn that the fourth beast is in power and 
we know who it is. It's the Roman Empire. There shouldn't be any question at all about that. So when it talks about the beast in Revelation, it's talking about this worldly kingdom. Who controls this world? It's the fourth beast. Now, the fourth beast, which is the fourth kingdom, gets its power from Satan. All right. So, the Antichrist is not Satan, but it gets its power from Satan. I got to make that correction. This is very important. It really is. These details matter. And so this is what this is all about. But immediately after the War of Armageddon, we know that Christ will be victorious. Immediately after the War of Armageddon begins the thousand year millennial reign. Okay. Now I want you to notice he mentioned Armageddon Giddin twice. Armageddon, a word that I cannot say. Armageddon. He mentioned it twice. Yet, the Bible only mentions it once. I just am fascinated with that. How, many, how often do we hear Armageddon? And how often do we hear Lucifer? Well, Lucifer is another one of those words that is only mentioned in the Bible one time. Just like Armageddon. Did in Armageddon. What, how, now, I might be saying that right. Armageddon. Armageddon. Yeah. So, this is mentioned one time, but people love to talk about it. And why is that? Well, that's because of Hollywood. Hey, you're, where are you getting all this stuff from? You're getting it from Hollywood. So, when you're preaching di uh, Bible doctrine, if you're bringing up Ar Armageddon and Lucifer, it, to me, it sounds like you're trying to preach the Hollywood doctrine. All right, okay, so I'll get off that. Rain. Now the saints here, now, but immediately after the war of Armageddon, we know that Christ will be victorious. Immediately after the war of Armageddon begins the thousand year millennial reign. Now the no, we don't know that. And what you're saying doesn't make any sense. Okay, I better let him talk. Immediately after the war of Armageddon begins the thousand year millennial reign. Now the saints here will be here on earth, but they will have glorified bodies and access to the tree of life. <clears throat> Alright, think about what he's saying. After Jesus returns, the saints will be here in their glorified bodies. Think about that. Christ will be on the throne and he will be our king. Christ will be on the throne and he will be our king. Now, I'll contend that he's my king right now, but okay. Now to summarize, the the Israelites, so, you know, the people of the book, um, they will play a role in judging the nations. Alright, so... I don't know what he's talking about, but he says the Israelites will play a role in judging the nations. Alright. And it just, I gotta tell you, it does not make any sense. What we read here, they shall be no more two kingdoms anymore at all and I will make them one nation man you just got done explaining thir Ezekiel 37 all right now I'm just I'm not making any judgments I'm just saying listen of the book, um, they will play a role in judging the nations as part of the kingdom government under Christ. Christ. All right. So, are you are you catching this? So, they're going to be the Israelite, right? Is going to be judging 
the nation? Nations? Well, who are they judging? Themselves? Huh? Who are they judging? They're ruling? Who are they ruling over? Themselves? Christ will be the head, the center, and then those 12 apostles uh, will, will rule with him, and then his tribes will be subdivisions. So. Subdivisions. Subdivisions. You hear that? You hear how wicked and evil this is? See, he's going to have power over you. He's not putting himself on the bottom. He's putting himself at the top. He's exalting himself over you. That's the only reason anybody would make this claim. And... Wow. Let's, I don't know if he admits it, but... One is your master, that's Christ. For one is your master, it's Jesus Christ. There are no subdivisions. No man will have authority over you. That's this world. That's not the world to come. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, right? That ye may be, I'm sorry, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. Wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us into glory. One God, right? One Lord, Jesus Christ. One one body right for as the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ one there's not subdivisions there's no implicate no nothing at all implying subdivisions none at all in fact um, it's uh, evil and it's a sin to even suggest it. All right, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. No subdivisions. All right, subdivisions is to suppose that you shall have respect of persons and God is not a respecter of persons alright if you have respect to persons you commit sin so you consider well you got the twelve tribes you got the twelve apostles they do not have authority over you or me we are all one in Christ Jesus no man is above another and no man is below another. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Now I could do this all day. If we, I mean, this really burns my butt because these guys. Maybe he admits it, but I hear this so often. This idea: well, there's going to be people ruling in the world to come. What they never tell you is, I'm the one that's going to be ruling over you. No. That's what they think. But that's not what's going to happen. Alright, so you think about the parable here in Matthew 20, where these guys get T.O.'d. T.O. stands for ticked off. They get T.O.'d because they've worked 12 hours. 
and they got themselves a penny and then here comes Johnny come lately he works one hour and he gets paid the same penny and the Lord didn't he says friend I do thee no wrong didst not thou agree with me for a penny so when we enter into the life to come we're all gonna be the same we're all gonna get equal reward that reward is enough all right now there's nothing at all in the Bible to suggest that you're gonna get more rewards than somebody else that's not gonna happen and it's better to learn that now than to find out later right because you're living a delusional fantasy that's never gonna play out if you think that there will be a power structure a subdivisions that's it, delusional and it's wicked alright and so what they never tell you is that they are gonna be the rulers and they're gonna be in their glorified bodies and I'll take it a step further they're gonna be having sex with the unsaved people so the tribes you know 144,000 they will then govern everybody else and it'll be a righteous kingdom it's 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 not like the work yeah it'll be righteous sex you'll you will have righteous obedience to me and you will do as I say our world our, you know our world you know we have people that take advantage of um, of power and authority but this is not that if you make it into the kingdom uh, you will be you will be treated well you won't be mistreated yeah, I'll, I'll treat you well don't worry about it I'll have authority over you and I'll treat you well but you'll do as I say um, now the scripture to back this up is um, Revelation 20 and 4 it says alright so there's no scripture to back it up alright so he just made up a bunch of stuff and so let's get into answering this question alright oh so what's the th this thousand years referring to alright I mean this it's so wicked man this what this guy's suggesting and I'm not gonna listen for another 15 minutes of him trying to squirm around this idea that he's gonna he's going to be ruling over unsaved women that's what he's teaching that he might not come out and say it but he's going to be in his glorified body ruling over unsaved women women that are not in their glorified bodies after Jesus comes and that's not in the Bible at all at all and it would make the Bible a lie alright so I better get better pull this one up when Jesus returns it is the end of the world and when it's the end of the world then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory so you cannot have unsaved people living after Jesus returns it's not possible and it's cruel to teach unsaved people that they can wait until after Jesus returns they can't their opportunity to be saved is right now All right, so what was the question here what's this thousand years referring to what's well, very simple alright it's very simple this thousand years is referring to a very unique time period and that unique time period is right now all right so let me walk you through this all right so in Revelation 20 if if you understand Revelation 1 where it says um, the angel of the Lord 
uh, that Jesus Christ sent the angel of the Lord to show John things which must shortly come to pass. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Alright, so John is going to tell us about these things that the angel showed him. And here we got an angel coming down from heaven showing John something. And that John is sharing this with us. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottom put in a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now this means that before this, Satan was not bound. All right, and this is in reference to the Old Testament when the nation of God was committed to one group of people. Now, the kingdom of God was uh, committed to one group of people. And we read about this, for example, in Exodus 19, when God says to Moses, Tell, he says, Ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right, so inside this bordered country is the kingdom of God. Outside of this bordered country are countries or nations that were deceived by Satan. All right, at the end of the thousand years, Satan is loosed. Why? Because that nation of God, the nation of Israel, the nation of God, all the people are lifted up in the air. That's what happens when Jesus comes, right? When Jesus comes, first the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord right there's that separation the separating of the sheep and the goat separating the wheat from the tear separating the saved from the unsaved so now we're up in the air now Satan once again he has access to the unsaved people outside of the kingdom of God just like he had done before Jesus came along so he goes out there and deceives the nations and, and the purpose of it is to gather them together. Right? And just as we read in Genesis 3 verse 15 when the Lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his head. Heal. And of course we read about this all throughout the Bible. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Revelation 3 verse 9. Behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. Again in 1 Corinthians 15. It says he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So, in Revelation 20, when Satan is loosed, he's loosed because there are no saved people on the earth. All right? Because when Jesus comes, he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. All right? So now, the kingdom of God is available to everybody. Right? This was not the case before, right? This was not the case before because before the kingdom of God was just within the children of Israel, just within that country, that nation of people. Now Jesus comes along and he, he says, the, nation, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof right so now 
the kingdom of God is available to whosoever liveth and believeth in him. Get it? Pretty simple stuff. I mean, it's pretty amazing, pretty remarkable how this transformation occurred and the impact it had on the world. It's pretty incredible that now anybody can be saved. Of course, here we are living in this world where we all have this great opportunity for everlasting life yet the deception and wickedness in this world is so bad that it takes a miracle for anybody to get saved and if God is to were to allow things to play out there would come a point where there would be nobody saved but for the elect's sake he's gonna cut these days short alright so the thousand years is a unique time period and we are in that thousand year period right now and there shouldn't be any mistake there shouldn't be any confusion there shouldn't be any doubt about it now let's walk through this here in verse 4 and I saw thrones and they sat upon them well that's talking about us those of us that are saved right now we sit on heavenly thrones right now and I feel like this is you know and I guess I shouldn't be so uh, rude I guess maybe it's one way to look at it but the stuff it, it it's everywhere in the Bible it's consistent all throughout the Bible. If we go to Galatians chapter 4, it says Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. See, our kingdom, our city is from above, right? And so here we sit on thrones. We sit on heavenly thrones. Let's go to back go back to Revelation chapter 1. <clears throat> excuse me all right so in revelation chapter one it says he has made us kings we're kings right now and we're priests right now remember what we read in exodus 19 and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests right remember what we read in um in first uh Peter chapter 2 ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people right just like what we're reading here in Exodus 19 we are the kings and priests unto God we are royalty we sit on thrones and judgment is given to us right in John chapter 11 it says whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die so the judgment of God has already been given to us right we are sealed sealed unto the day of redemption nothing can take this away the judgment of God has already been determined that can never change right now we are sealed secured saved sanctified forever that'll never change we are kings unto God we have eternal life and that will never ever change the judgment of God has already been given to us And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark in the, upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Okay, so <clears throat> think about this. This has already been going on. The, the people had getting their heads cut off. That's already been going on. All right, for being a witness of Jesus. And 
for not worshiping the beast what's what's happening right now people are worshiping the beast right now people are worshiping this worldly kingdom right now all right and they are putting their trust and their faith and their hopes and their dreams into the worldly kingdom right now right now those of us that are putting our hope and faith and trust and all that into the Lord Jesus Christ we do not worship the beast but we live and reign with Christ right now that's hard to see even though it's written very plainly if you've been deceived by those that teach this falsely it's easier to lie to somebody than it is to convince them that they've been lied to all right you can think about um, Ezekiel uh, I'm sorry <laughs> John chapter 8 let's go to John 8 real quickly we're in John chapter 8 and Jesus is having a conversation with these Jews and he says why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word he's standing right in front of them telling them very plainly and they still can't understand it so also when we read Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 and it very plainly says they talking about those of us that are saved they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years talking about us living and reigning with Christ for this during this thousand year period as plain as day it's not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years it's talking about those of us that are saved living and reigning with Christ a thousand years uh, it's incredible really it's a phenomenon that people can see the very same thing that you and I are looking at right now and just they don't see it it's incredible it's not talking about Jesus reigning a thousand years it's talking about those they us that are saved living and reigning with Christ all right verse 5 but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished see that's amazing right because clearly there are dead people there are dead people so so when you go to like first Corinthians 15 and you realize very plainly very simply that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it's the end of the world and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory there is no more death yet here in Revelation 20 it says the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished there's only one possibility and that is the end of the thousand years is the end of the world otherwise 1 Corinthians 15 is wrong <laughs> and you've got nothing at all nothing in the Bible anywhere ah oh, thanks for appreciate that hopefully you got rid of these YouTube ads that are driving me up the wall okay alright so the rest of the dead live not again until a thousand years are finished this is the first resurrection well who's the first resurrection is is it the zombies walking around with their head cut off no nope, that's not it is it you no nope, it's not you you're not the first resurrection it's not headless zombies no and who is it well Jesus 
to answer that question. I mean, he straight ahead said w without any ambiguity whatsoever. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So, I mean, he's the resurrection. But you want to call him a liar, that's on you, buddy. Jesus is the resurrection. Shouldn't be any doubt about it whatsoever. But people lie, don't they? People want to say, no, it's going to be those of us that are going to rule and reign for a thousand years over unsaved women. We're the first resurrection. You're making yourself out to be God Almighty. When you make that claim, it's ridiculous. All right, you want to talk about subdivisions? Okay, we got one subdivision right here. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ that is coming. All right, so you want to preach subdivisions? Okay, Christ is the head, and we are the body. That's it. We're the subdivisions, if anything right so Christ has led the way he's our shepherd he's our leader he is the perfect example for us he leads the way and we follow him so he has died that means he has destroyed this temple that we're in and he has risen back to life he has rebuilt the temple and he has ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us he is the first fruits he is the first resurrection I am the resurrection he said that even before he was put to death and rose back to life he is the resurrection and you're a liar when you say that you are the resurrection or that you will be the first resurrection you're just a bald-faced liar and you don't have any understanding of the scripture whatsoever and you shouldn't be teaching the Bible at all. all right, because it's absolutely wicked and cruel to teach this idea that there will be unsaved people living after Jesus returns. That's never gonna happen. You got that by watching a Hollywood movie. You didn't get it by reading the Bible. Verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Right. Blessed and holy is he that has part in your resurrection? Because you're the first resurrection? No, no. Jesus is the resurrection. Right? It's very plain. And blessed and holy is, is those of us that has part in his resurrection on such the second death has no power. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live the second death has no power right though he were dead yet shall he live right the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests right ye are a royal priesthood and they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years I don't know if I can make it any plainer any easier to see than that right there All right when the thousand years are expired Satan, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison I already I already went over this but this is when he, we're up in the air with the Lord and now Satan has access to all the unsaved people that are, that are on the earth yet. We're up in the air. And then the, the wrath of God is poured upon the unsaved. Killing all the unsaved and destroying Satan forever. Right? Satan and the beast and the false prophet. This is all happening at the same time, at, which is at the end of the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, at the end of the world, which is the great day of the Lord. Right, it's all happening at the same time. All right, so you can 
take your fairy tale dispensation movie book, movie stories, whatever, and shove them up your yin yang. I don't want nothing to do with it. It's not scriptural at all, right? So, the compass, the camp of the saints, about that's when we are up in the air, right? Where we read that at? Didn't I show you right there? Jerusalem, which is above, is free, right? We're Jerusalem, which is above, compass the camp of the saints about in the beloved city, above. We're, that's above. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up. The angels of God gather us together above. Just like we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. All right, and so shall we ever be with the Lord, right? So when this happens, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment and twinkling eye at the last trump. That's the end of the world, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We are lifted up into the air. Right, we're lifted up into the air. You see that? It's amazing, huh? And so when this happens and the wrath of God is poured upon the earth, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. All right, The devil and Satan and the false prophet and the beast and all evil is going to be done away with forever. All right, <laughs> and verse 11, that's Jesus up in the air. So we're getting one perspective here at the end of the world, and then we're getting the perspective of, hey, it's Jesus that's up in the air. It's Jesus. He is the one that sits upon the great white throne. All right, when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of of the world just like what we read in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 when it says the sun shall be darkened it also the Joel chapter 2 uh, in Isaiah well okay so all right never mind here let's make it simple all right let's make this real simple and the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, right? From whose face the earth and heaven fled away, right? And so, um, oops, uh, let's do it this way. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, yes. It's the end of the world, right? Just as it was in the days of Noah when God destroyed the world by water, this time God destroys the world by fire, right? And the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Revelation 20 from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no there was found no place for them it's the same moment in time you can't have Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven and the elements and everything of heaven and earth melt and then what a thousand years later you're gonna the same thing is gonna happen again no, it, it doesn't make any sense. You can't have two ends of the worlds. You can't have two Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heavens. It's a one time. Just use a little bit of your brain, man, and realize this is talking about the same dog d event. The same darn event. It's the same moment in time. Don't be a fool. And there's not 55 different returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's not 72 different ends of the world. Man, it's all one. 
is prophesied all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And if you're not saved, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, that's it. You blew it, man. You had your chance. Your chance is right now. Yeah, if you wait, I mean, Jesus could come in five minutes from now. There's nothing preventing him from coming. Nothing whatsoever. He could come right now. And if you're not saved right now, well, it'll, it'll be too late. And I don't know what you're waiting for, partner. I don't know what you're waiting for. You put it off in another minute, it could be too late. So anyways, Revelation 20, it's not different than anything else that we're, we've read in the Bible. It's giving us another image, if you will, another angle to see things, to help us to understand, and to give us some insight in what it's like. That's all. The judgment of God, right? If you're not there, it's bad news, buddy. It's bad news. Right? So anyways, I hope that helps. I hope that helps somebody. I hope that helps Ken Lane or whoever might still be watching, if anybody is watching, right? Because really, once you see it, man, it's it's there. It's obvious. I mean, it's a, it lines up with everything that we've read all throughout the Bible. Okay. Have a good day now.